Hey there, it's uh, Chuck Diesel85 at gmail.com. Well, uh, up in front of the camera today, we got a uh, MFJ226. Uh, um, yeah, it's a uh, graphical uh, impedance analyzer. Basically, it's uh, an antenna analyzer. And uh, it's a pretty nice uh, piece of uh, device right here. Um, what it does, it comes with, it comes in this, in this box. The only thing that wasn't included was this right here. I got one of these from uh, Universal Radio. It's basically like a, a really nice cap. <clears throat> and, uh, and then uh, this natively comes with a, uh, an N uh, style uh, uh, plug. Uh, most of my stuff here I use the uh, SO239s. Uh, so, or the uh, commonly known as uh, the UHF connector. So, uh, so I just keep this hooked up on to here. Plus, it keeps the uh, dust out of the unit, and that's why I also put this on here. Also, makes it look pretty cool. So, um, but it does provide a lot of usefulness. The only thing I wish it did is it came with a case. But uh, besides that, uh, one thing I like about it is uh, very it feels very uh, indestructible for the most part. It's got a nice big display on it, the uh, the back thing, I'll turn it on here. Uh, and it comes up with the main menu and everything, you can uh, calibrate it, you can uh, hook up to a PC and stuff like that. Uh, what's kind of odd is it doesn't come with any software in here, but you can download the software uh, off of uh, M uh, MFJ's uh, site. So. Yeah, so, uh, well, let's uh, see what this thing can do. I'm gonna, got a, this is, um, we got this hooked up right now uh, to a uh, Diamond uh, X300A. Uh, it's UHF to UHF, so uh, adapter, so 239s of both ends of this cable. This is, um, I plan on uh, upgrading my, uh, uh, my stuff today. I plan on actually uh, replacing this uh, here cable all the way out up to the uh, little uh, tower that I got. Uh, this stuff right here is uh, a Radio Shack or Tandy um, RG8X uh, from here. And then all I was able to get uh, a couple of years ago, this was about 10 years ago, was some RG58 uh, uh, coax. So this stuff is uh, definitely old, old stuff here. Uh, the loss on it, uh, you know, especially once it leaves the uh, 8x here which is only right outside the window here it goes into that uh, 58 so you're gonna have a lot of loss there um, I don't have any type of uh, real lightning protection I actually I got everything today it's all gonna be replaced and all that kind of stuff so uh, every time uh, I get done using my uh, radio equipment I just I simply unplug it you know that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna protect you from a, a full, full on board lightning strike but It'll help, uh, you know, uh, mitigate the uh, uh, air, uh, uh, basically uh, the static that forms uh, in the air with the uh, uh, voltages that are created from uh, uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, wind creates it, uh, you know, turbulence, and uh, uh, you know, uh, even uh, even distant lightning strikes can create uh, voltage spikes in your uh, your setup. You don't want that for your rigs. Um, so anyways, uh, simply uh, <clears throat> just plugs it right into here. Now one of the, one of the things that most people ask, what are, what are all these little things for? But if you look at inside the uh, connector here, you'll see that there's, uh, there's little prongs that stick out. So you want to make sure you get these right on in there. So what I do is I push it on in and then screw it in. And then what I do is halfway through make sure it doesn't move so it's in there so you get an accurate reading. So, and you don't have to really dog that thing on there too bad. So, in this case, we're going to do a, a single frequency uh, type of uh, plot right here. So, we're not going to we're not going to do any graphing yet, but uh, it's simply just uh, it's very easily controlled uh, using the up down arrows. <clears throat> and you got the numeric keypad there, settings uh, back, uh, and this is the uh, the enter key. So, we're going to get in there. All right. So, <clears throat> you know. Uh, the uh, loss rate now we're getting around 1.13. Uh, it's fluctuating between 1.13 and 1.4, which is uh, for the setup I got now is uh, is uh, exceptionally well. Um, 
the only problem is, is that even though you know you got to keep in mind, even though that you're getting, we're getting good results here, the uh, the the amount of loss that you're getting is uh, uh, substantially uh, higher in terms of wattage going to that um, uh, that antenna. So you know, you, even though you're getting good readings here, it's the uh, thickness of the cable that determines how many watts are going to actually enter uh, that antenna, so or the radiating element. So. Um, but you want to keep make sure your SWR is as low as possible. That's the key to getting the, the maximum amount of power through your cable to your uh, elements. So in this case, uh, we, and the higher the SWR, it also there's going to be a lot of uh, feedback on the line as well that uh, goes back through the shielding that goes back to your to your rig, which uh, uh, can uh, damage uh, your rig and. Uh, uh, negate its life expectancy uh, quite a bit. So, uh, as you can see here, we got uh, we got a bunch of um, you know information here. SWR kind of gives you like this little uh, bar graph. As you can see, if I get out of the frequency range, it uh, substantially increases because the elements not tuned for 133 megahertz, for example. So, I just keep going up. So, we're not. And then the cool thing is, say it, you know, it's well beyond the bounds, you can just simply enter in frequency you want, and bingo. So, quickly see uh, the the boundaries of this. So, but say uh, for example you don't want that, so we're gonna go back. Um, oh yeah, actually if I go back into the single frequency plot here, um, if you hit the uh, gear icon or the, the settings icon, it gives you all the different. Um, options here so you get the ZRX uh, for reactants and stuff like that series uh, all that so I'll bring it up to 146 the impedance parallel uh, impedance uh, rectangular and polar coordinates uh, very handy if you're you're, you're doing uh, manual uh, paper charting which uh, this this device actually eliminates you doing that but if you want to do it for a certain certain frequency uh, sometimes I like to do that just to check double check my uh, work so it's nice, but and then it brings you back right back. So, anyways, we're gonna go back to the main menu here. I want to go to the sweep frequency. What sweep frequency does? I'll go back here. What sweep frequency does is it lets you do it over a certain range. So, say uh, you know that your antenna should be tuned for 144. You know, uh, of course, this is an amateur uh, radio antenna, so it's a two meter and a seventy. This is the, the only thing I don't like about this. It only goes to 230. But most of my stuff, I'm going to be doing HF or uh, VHF. Um, the antenna, the, the rig I got up there now, uh, the element is uh, a dual bander. It's a uh, two meter and uh, seventy centimeter. So I'm thinking about one of these days going out and getting uh, getting one. But if the uh, two meter side is is right where you want it, generally speaking, your other bands can be go good too, unless there's a problem with the element phasing in the in the antenna. So um, usually the the other uh, bands will also tell you that as well that you're hey there's an issue going on so um, that's the only that's the only knock to this device I wish it went up to like 500 megahertz or or, or e even gigahertz but um, I'm sure that would uh, ex uh, make the cost a lot higher which uh, I, I would have rather spent more money if it went all the way up there but it, uh, there would there's no there's nothing else out there unless you spend start spending. Tw Two to three to four thousand dollars on something. I was going to spend uh, this. Just unit, I only paid three hundred twenty dollars for free shipping, so I was very happy with that for what, for what it does. Now uh, it gives you a bunch of different things here. It gives you SWR, basically everything that you saw on the other screen, with the exception of the of the uh, Smith chart. But it lets you do it over f um, uh, a multitude of uh, frequencies, so a range of frequencies. So I'm going to do the SWR, and I already have it set for. Uh, 144 so if I go down here and it tells you right where everything is and uh, for the most part because this antenna isn't um, uh, you know this element and the, the feed line isn't too bad our values are not that bad at all it's pretty much a flat line that's typically what you want to see uh, I'm going to be putting in LMR 400 today so um, anyways what's helping this up is uh, the fact that the connectors aren't uh, homemade connectors it's the fact that they're uh, and I'm not dissing any you know like homemade connectors and just uh, 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 homemade connectors are fine on the thicker wires but um, on the thin stuff it can, it can get kind of uh, crazy so 
Uh, you do the imp uh, impedance on here. And to simply change any of the, uh, the start and stops, you just go through there. And you just hit the enter key and it changes it and everything. But, um, yeah. So, as you can see, it's uh, pretty well uh, flatlined with the resistance here. I'll go through all of them real quick. You know, for the... It, it, this thing will pick up anything that um, the, uh, your uh, antenna is uh, doing that's uh, kind of odd. And uh, this looks uh, fairly well it's within the... Uh, and this also helps for tuning of uh, antennas. I was actually playing around with an antenna. And you can see here... Also, you can also tell when you're... It, this is also uh, extremely helpful if you're going out and buying an antenna, you know, whether it be used or new, um, a lot of uh, uh, shops uh, have the uh, antennas usually, uh, you know, they'll, they'll let you, you know, um, they have them set up sometimes in the storeroom, depending on how big they are, um, you know, if it's a real good shop, and you can bring your antenna analyzer and then uh, mess around with the, uh, if you bring this into the stores, they'll let you uh, obviously play with some places. I heard uh, HRO uh, has one of these. Uh, the store lets you see what it actually looks like, and uh, especially for mobile antennas, see what's going on. So uh, it's almost like a um, you know, like when you take your car to like Advanced Auto and you say, "Hey, check the engine lights on. Hey, something's not working right." It's a very similar unit to that. So you can see uh, how your antennas are uh, working. So phase angle. Uh, pretty normal right there. Tells you what your decibel loss is and all that kind of good stuff. And and this also basically this this also can tell you if I go back to one, get your nice Smith chart there. Um, if I go back up to who, who is this WR? It was one of one of these. Yeah. So you can see right where the sweet spots are of the uh, of, of the antenna uh, in terms of. Um, you know uh, how it's uh, properly functioning. Maybe where its element, its its radi radiating elements are are the best. So it's you know all throughout this, uh, it's giving you an idea of what your antenna looks like. You know, just like when you go outside and look at it, you, you, it's really hard to tell what it's exactly doing. Yeah, it's an antenna, but this uh, gives you like uh, the look and feel of what it's actually uh, radiating. So. Very, uh, very cool, uh, piece of rig here, and I'm actually, uh, I'm actually gonna hook it up to, uh, um, uh, one, one thing to keep in mind is that, uh, the reason why they, uh, have stuff like this is, uh, uh so you don't necessarily need to be, uh, transmitting out into nothing here, so I'm gonna go in here and get my other, uh, not tear all this stuff out anyways for a couple hours, so, wait for it to, uh, warm up a little bit out there, I got a couple errands I gotta do this morning. This. Um, so we're gonna hook this up now. Uh, outside there, we actually got a, a G5 RV out there, tuned for uh, you know usable for 62 uh, or excuse me 82 uh, well 10 uh, uh, meters. So uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna we don't care about single frequency because it's a wire antenna. Uh, we're gonna want our uh, well we'll do uh, well let's see here. The RS, SWR meters, uh, that's what we're mostly interested in. Uh, coincidentally enough, it, uh, I found this out the other day that uh, that thing actually radiates uh, relatively good on uh, <laughs> between 146 and 147 megahertz. So I could actually get away with using that as a very, 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 very crude uh, 2 meter antenna. And I think what's helping is the, uh, again, this is all. This whole thing is actually all RG58. And what I think is helping is, is making that antenna resonant at 2 at that, at that frequency because of the feed line, so that has a lot to do with it. So, uh, anyways, we're gonna we're gonna change our plot thing here. So, I'm gonna set it to 160 meters, and you can see here it's gonna change to um, I don't know here uh, I don't know. Let's see, let's say 30 30 megahertz here. And what it does is it actually shows you, without using an antenna tuner, uh, of course this, this is directly to that, that antenna out there, all the, uh, I don't know, it's a good uh, 75 feet out there. It's telling you what the, uh, what the sweet spots are of the antenna pretty much, okay? Uh, so if we go down, 
I don't know, like uh, 18 megahertz, you know, and it tells you, it shows you the, the uh, uh, so we go to more down to the 160 band range here, uh, and you see it, it's a little high in the 160, but you, you go down, and then uh, unfortunately in the 80 meter range, it's um, just a little bit high. And it drops down and that's the whole point of an antenna tuner is it's supposed to make it resonant enough to uh, emulate like you have a lower SWR problem is with antenna tuners you do have a lot of loss so um, if you can make that antenna maybe this summer I'll go out there and modify it or make a new one and make it uh, tune it up using this device to um, uh, resonate you know to the point where uh, maybe I don't need an antenna tuner but I shall probably use it um, to uh, resonate at uh, particular frequencies, but yeah, you can go back and forth here, it tells you everything, so let me get my Smith chart here, and uh, yeah, now that, the Smith chart's going to be very messy, only because of all the plots, and what, now that's the other thing to keep in mind, anytime you're doing something like this, probably, and you can also export this stuff, when you export it's a lot better on the computer, I should have hooked, I should have, uh, before I did the video, maybe I'll do, I'll do another video on this, uh, maybe uh, later I'll probably do one after I replace the feed line, so uh, I'll give you an idea of uh, before and after of uh, from using shitty uh, RD58 to LMR400. So uh, I'll show you the difference between that. So uh, again, you know, there's a very uh, uh, now the calibrate thing you can calibrate uh, a lot of times. Uh, people they already know what the, uh, the their loss is of their feed line. So what they'll do is go over a course of a couple of days in temperature environments and wetness factors. They'll uh, measure their their feed line. Once they do an average, you can calibrate it, put in put in the parameters, and then um, um, factor out the coaxial uh, loss. And then you'll get your SWR plots for your actual uh, re uh, your elements. So you could do that too with some people, but I like. I'm the type of person where I need a, I want to know how the whole system's working, the whole uh, uh, matching network. So uh, basically, you want to keep this, uh, you know, usually like this. It's pre preset from the factory like this. So uh, yeah. So anyways, um, one, it's got a one-year warranty on it um, and uh, stuff like that. So uh, so if I do a single frequency, it's like I was mentioning, it's. 146 and 147 is actually pretty uh pretty good it's only because of distance too but that doesn't necessarily mean that all my power is going to be radiating out to that i'll probably be getting maybe one watt out to that antenna at 50 watts so um there's a lot to be uh <laughs> uh said for that so but if i needed it in an emergency yeah uh, it would uh, that it would work just fine so the turn it off you pretty much just hit that and disconnect it so like i said very good rig um a little expensive for high some people's taste, but if you're doing this for, you know, uh, you know, maybe for a living or you're, you know, you, you enjoy ham radio, it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely not a bad, bad, uh, rig. So, I hope you enjoyed the video, and, uh, if you have any questions, easel85gmail.com, uh, um, I always, uh, check my email and stuff like that, so, it's the MFJ, uh, 226, uh, analyzer, so, uh, yeah, well, anyways, uh, have yourself a great day.